open and line out. We also have our speaker level input. And then over here on the side, I have my digital outputs. Uh, a lot of guys get confused on the digital outputs and we'll cover a little bit more about those in a minute. Um, but these are a coax digital out, an optical output, and a USB output. This is not the USB that we use to connect to the computer. That USB is here on top. Also on top of the product is the uh, power switch here. You just press and hold to turn it on, press and hold to turn it off. Speaking of power, these do have a built-in lithium ion rechargeable battery. Get about four to five hours out of a charge. So if you are taking it out to a car, a uh, customer's car, whatever it is, out to the parking lot, um, this is going to last for about four or five hours. You don't have to drag an extension cord out there, which is awesome. So onto the other physical portions of it, there is a volume knob here for the outputs. We'll cover more about that here in just a sec. And then there's the option port. A lot of guys ask me, well, what do we need an option port for on the DMRTA? The option port is specifically for the ACBT24. This is our Bluetooth dongle or Bluetooth adapter. This plugs directly into the option port on the front of the DMRTA. And this is gonna allow you to control the software and, and use the DMRTA tool from a cell phone or from a tablet. If you're using it with your laptop, you're gonna use it with the USB port that's right here on top. Um, just to cover the question that I get a lot, these are cross-platform uh, compatible. So before you even have to shoot me an email and ask, these will work on Mac, PC, uh, laptops or desktops, but they'll also work with Android smartphones, iPhones, Android tablets, iPads, pretty much everything out there uh, the software will work for. And the software looks the same regardless of what platform it's used on. So it always looks the same. It just scales it for size, which is great. So let's get into um, some of the different things that we can do with this and some of the different software tools. I'm going to pull up the software on the screen behind me so that you guys can see that. And what we'll do is we'll go through some of the different um, parts of that and how to use it. So let's pull up the DMRTA software here. And here we are. So in the DMRTA software, you'll see up behind me here, um, we have essentially five tabs. So if you can see here on the screen, we've got the oscilloscope, polarity checker, SPL meter, RTA, and voltage meter. Those are the five features or five functions that are built into the DMRTA itself. And those are the five main things that most guys are gonna use this for, obviously. So um, I have a DMRTA here in my hands that I'll be kind of holding up and showing you guys. And I have another one on my desk here that's actually all set up as our test bench. So um, we'll be doing some, some real world testing and things like that as well. But one of the things I always like to show guys in the software on the DMRTA is that this really has everything built in that you're gonna need to do most of your testing with OEM integration, uh, tuning systems, setting up new sound systems. And that doesn't just go for mobile. Obviously we're all mobile guys, but there are also aspects of this that are gonna be used for uh, home audio, home theater, custom install, um, setting up pro audio, bars and clubs, venues, whatever that may be. So if you're curious why it has quarter inch inputs and outputs, that's one of the reasons why, just so that it can be used for more than just mobile audio. So when we go through the software itself and we're looking on the screen here, you can see my cursor there in the background. There's three little tabs that show up that say sine, pink, and square wave. These are the audio outputs of the DMRTA. So when you get into a vehicle and you need pink noise to do your testing, all you have to do is click pink noise. And you'll get a sound like that. Sounds kind of like static if you've never heard pink noise before. If you need a sine wave and you need a specific frequency, we click sine wave. And as you change the frequency slider here below it, you can make it whatever frequency you want. So if we need a thousand hertz test tone, we can click here and uh, bring this slider up to a thousand, let's say. Now we've got approximately a thousand hertz test tone. If you want to get specific and make this exactly a thousand, you can actually click here and type in as well. Now we have exactly a thousand hertz test tone. Let's turn that off. You get the idea. I just like guys to be able to hear that and see what that's like. So those um, test tones and pink noise will actually come out of all of the outputs of the DMRTA at the same time. So when I click on pink noise and I have a set of RCAs hooked up to the RCA output of this, going to say the aux input of a uh, factory radio or aftermarket radio, it's going to put pink noise out through the system and play it for you. You don't have to go find that old scratched up test disc or pair your phone to a customer's Bluetooth radio or something like that you can actually use what's built into the device itself. Same thing, if you need a 60 hertz test tone um, you know, coming out of this, 
We click sine waves, sine wave, we set it to 60 hertz, and it's now putting a 60 hertz test tone out of all of these outputs at the same time. You don't have to tell it which one to put out of. So if, if that's the case, if we click 60 hertz and, and sine wave, it's gonna be putting out of the quarter inch, the RCA, and the digital outs at the same time, okay? So speaking of those outputs, um, one of the things that I get asked a lot, and one of the things that I like to mention to guys is the USB that's built into the DMRTA. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's two USBs. There's one actually on the top of the product here. This is for hooking up to your computer, and that's gonna be for controlling the software and actually running the DMRTA. And then there's a USB right here on the front. The USB that's right here on the front is actually not for controlling it. This is where we store our internal files for the pink noise, the sine wave, the square wave info, all of that good stuff. But there's an added benefit to that. And, and a, lot of, um, a lot of users actually don't even know that this exists even though they already have one of these. And that is, there is some free internal space on here. There's about 10 gigs or so, 12 gigs or so of internal space that is unused. So we can actually use that like a thumb drive and put your own music files on. It sounds really simple and it is, but believe it or not, I get asked every single day, hey, how do I do that? You mentioned that I can put my own files on it. How am I supposed to do that? So I'm gonna quickly show you guys how that works and how we would do that. So what you're gonna use is you're gonna plug into the face of the um, USB uh, on the front of the DMRTA, I should say, and plug it into your computer using a USB A to A cable, okay? Now, if you're not familiar with what an A to A cable looks like, I've got one right here. A to A is gonna be your standard USB mail to mail cable like this. So you're gonna plug one end of this into your DMRTA, just like so, and the other end of it's gonna go into your laptop, okay, or into your desktop computer. Now I already have that set up, so I'm gonna pull up my desktop here and show you guys what that looks like. So when we go to the desktop of my computer, okay, uh, on the screen here you will see, just to close, uh, right here it shows DMRTA and it shows it like a drive. It shows up just like a thumb drive because that's essentially what it is, okay? It's flash memory. So if I double click on that DMRTA drive, what you're gonna see is a window pops up and you're gonna see the internal files on there. So you're gonna see three folders that are put there by audio control. If you wanna put your own music files on here, all you've gotta do is drag and drop your file straight onto the unit itself or you could do what I've done and just make a folder I called mine music tracks I have about seven or eight songs in there. And all you're gonna do is just drag and drop into here, and it'll transfer those files on there. It's just like using any other thumb drive, okay? So right now it's dragging and dropping those onto the system itself. Once that transfer is done, you would be able to plug in your DMRTA to pretty much any radio with a USB port, okay, using this cable. And now it's gonna access this internal flash media. And now you can pull up all of those songs that you've got stored on there in every vehicle you get into. So again, like I mentioned earlier, you don't need a test disk, you don't need to pair your phone to the customer's radio, you don't have to try to you know, go find that thumb drive with all of your favorite test tracks on it or whatever it is. You've got quite a bit of internal storage there. Drag and drop your files, every car you get into, you've got everything you need. So pretty simple with that part. But like I said, I get asked that question a lot, so I wanted to show you guys how to do that. So let's move on to the actual software itself and how to use some of the software that's built in here and some of the different features. So we'll start on the... Uh, side here where it says voltage meter. So as I click on that, you'll see it highlights that tab. It switches my screen to my voltage meter. So the neat thing about the DMRTA is that we can actually read voltage from any of the inputs. So a lot of guys think of the voltage meter and they think of their digital multimeter or something like that. And sure, it's similar to that. But what's nice is that it'll actually read from any of these inputs. So say you have a aftermarket radio and you're unsure of, of how hot that RCA output really is or maybe you found some speaker leads in a car and you're doing OEM integration in, and you're not sure, did the speaker wires I just find, are they before the factory amplifier? Are they after the factory amplifier? Is there a factory amplifier at all? We could find all of that out using the voltage meter, okay? So one of the things we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a signal from an aftermarket radio I've actually got sitting on the desk here, okay? I've got a real basic inexpensive aftermarket radio. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed a sine wave into this radio and then we're gonna turn up the radio and we're gonna find out what type of RCA output we have coming out of that, okay? So what I've done is I've just taken my uh, RCA out from my DMRTA, I'm feeding it to the auxiliary input of this aftermarket radio, and now we're gonna take the RCA output from this aftermarket radio and we're gonna plug it into our DMRTA, 
And then up on the screen, when you're looking at the software, there's a few different things up at the top here, okay? One of those is right here. I click this little drop-down box and it tells me which input I want to look at. Now, I don't know how well it shows up on the screen there, but it says microphone, balance line, unbalance line, and speaker. So because we're reading the RCA input, I'm going to click on unbalance line. We're now going to play sine wave, and I'm going to start to turn up the volume on this radio, and we'll see what type of voltage we actually get out of this deck, okay? That's absolute max volume on this radio, and we get 0.78 volts out of this radio, okay? So obviously not a super hot RCA output, but it's good to know because the box for this radio claimed that it had a three or four volt preamp output. So if you are a, a, a retail guy, if you are a tech, if you're a sales guy, whatever it is, and a customer brings in one of these radios and says, hey, this thing was 30 bucks on Amazon, why shouldn't I use it? I mean, it says it's got three or four volt preamp outputs. Well, maybe you do a quick test and maybe just show them why, you know, or show them what the real difference is between a, a quality radio and something like this. So um, that's just one test. Like I said, you could also use it to read the speaker input uh, side of things. So if you find some leads in a car and you want to find out what those leads are, it's a real quick, easy way to do it, okay? So um, on the voltage meter, that's a, a basic idea of kind of what we have going on. Let's move on to the RTA. Uh, I've just pulled up the RTA feature. Here up at the top of the screen, again, I see my mic gain. I see microphone as my input. Uh, right now we're reading the RTA using the microphone. And up here in the corner is the little 48V. If you've never used the DMRTA before or you're new to this whole thing, the 48V is the phantom power supply for the microphone. A lot of professional microphones require phantom power, 48 volt phantom power to operate. So if you're using a microphone like one of our audio control mics, like I've got sitting right here, this will require power to operate. If this little button here is not turned on and it's not lit up bluish purple like it is right now, essentially the microphone will not. So if you ever hook up your DMRTA and you go, hey, I'm not getting a reading, that's the first thing we always recommend checking. It's one of those quick little tips that's a, a lifesaver if you don't know about. So we have a microphone hooked up right now. As you can see on the screen, it's picking up my voice. Here on the top of the RTA is the vertical scale. This is where we can change the screen. You saw just a second ago, uh, my voice was going completely off the screen. It was kind of hard to read what we had going on. If I change this again, I've got it you know, more filling the screen there. Depending on how loud and what you have going on for your input, you may need to change this to get it to fit the screen. Now up at the top of the screen is also a mic gain. So I could bring this down a little bit too if I just wanna to try to squeeze all of the uh, RTA information all on the screen at once. In the middle of the screen is speed. This is fast, medium, and slow. This just describes how fast it's reacting. Right now I have it set to slow. It's a little bit easier to read the RTA. If I go to medium, you'll see it's a little bit faster behind me. And fast is gonna be pretty sporadic but sometimes you need that quick response. This has the ability to do that. Off to the side, we also have what octave resolution you want. I have it on one sixth octave right now, which is kind of our medium setting. If you go down to one third octave resolution, you can see that the bars behind me just got a little bit bigger, a little bit less detail. Now for most of the RTA work you're gonna do in cars, one third or one sixth octave is probably gonna be plenty. But if you do need to get super detailed, we also have one twelfth octave resolution, which as you can see up there is really, really fine detail. Uh, on the RTA. Now in the middle of the screen is one of the coolest things I think we have built into the RTA, which is the RTA memory. So if we click on this drop-down box, it actually gives me a whole host of options here. You have the ability to store and recall six different RTA presets or six different RTA memories, I should say. So let's say we take the uh, output of this factory radio here, this aftermarket radio, okay? And we're gonna take that same radio and we're gonna take that same RCA input but now instead of reading the microphone on our RTA, let's read the unbalanced line input and let's turn our microphone off. You see when I killed that 48 volt up there, the microphone took a second and turned off like that. Now we're reading the unbalanced line input or the RCA input. So now if I start to play pink noise here, you can actually see what pink noise looks like on an RTA, okay? Now again, if this is a little bit too high, see how it's kind of bouncing off the screen there and I wanna make it just more adequately fill the screen. I can adjust my line level up here at the top of the screen to make it fill it out a little bit easier and make it a little bit easier to read and see. Okay, so there I've got a, a pretty good grip on that. So that's the main thing I'd like guys to realize with the RTA. Everybody thinks of an RTA as using a microphone, tuning a car, that sort of thing. And yes, it's absolutely uh, useful and, and an invaluable tool for doing that. 
But really, you're using RTA for tuning and all that once the installation is done. Let's not think about once the install is done quite yet. Let's think about actually doing the install and what it's going to take to do that, right? Sometimes we're doing OEM integration. Sometimes we don't know uh, what kind of signals we're dealing with. Sometimes we don't know if something's pre-crossed over or if the factory radio has a um, OEM EQ curve or some sort of dynamic EQ. The RTA can be used for all of that. So don't forget, this RTA will not just use a microphone. This will use all of the electrical inputs to RTA as well. So like in this instance, let's say this is the signal we see up on the screen when we tapped into the front dash speaker of a vehicle. Okay, great. Well, now we know that front dash speaker in that vehicle has full range sound going to it, right? If we saw something where, you know, only half of the screen was populated or there was only information on one side of the screen, we would know that that vehicle, that channel going to that speaker was pre-crossed over. So it's super, super useful when you're trying to do OEM integration and you're trying to find out, you know, um, how we're going to integrate. Do we need to do signal summing? Uh, are we going to need something that does summing? Or are we going to be able to just use full range input straight into my high to low converter or my LC7i or my DSP or whatever the case may be? So pretty cool feature. Um, the RTA is definitely one of those things where any modern shop doing any sort of OEM integration or even the enthusiast that's doing OEM integration to a higher level really needs something like this to be able to read. Um, because unfortunately, if you don't have something to read these inputs and, and analyze these signals, essentially what you're really doing is guessing at that point, right? Nobody likes to hear that they're guessing when they're doing their install. But unfortunately, that's kind of the truth if you don't have the right tools uh, to do the job properly. So um, there's a lot that we can do with the RTA. I could spend a whole lot of time on just the RTA if we wanted to, but uh, for the sake of time, we'll move on and, and get on to some other things here as well. So let's move on to the SPL meter. SPL meter, there's obviously, um, you know, a lot of guys understand what an SPL meter does or how it works. Let's turn on our microphone here and have a look at what we have going on. One of the cool features with this too is, um, you know, how we can use this not just to find out how loud something is, but I also suggest for a lot of guys to use this to find out how quiet something is. And here's what I mean by that. So in the middle of the screen here, just going over some of the features, it says reference mic. This is where we tell it which microphone we're using, okay? And you can select one of the different microphones that we sell, and it's gonna adjust the mic gain up at the top of the screen to match that microphone so that you're getting an accurate reading. So I've selected the CM20, which is the microphone we have on our test bench here. Now you can see we're getting an accurate reading up on the screen. You know, my voice here in this room is right around 70 dB or so. There's some cool features here as well, kind of like the RTA. Here in the middle, I have fast, medium, and slow. Like I mentioned with the RTA, this is going to just slow down the response so you can get, you know, a little bit more time to catch that reading. You also have a peak hold feature over here on the side. So if I light up that hold feature, this is just going to give me the loudest reading. So if I make it a little bit louder, there we go. Now we've got our, our peak reading. So one of the questions I get uh, often on the SPL meter as well is, how loud will it read? Basically, the SPL meter is going to read as loud as the microphone that's being used with it. Okay? So we offer several different microphones. Um, we're going to go over those here in just a few minutes, and those are going to um, have different SPL reading capabilities uh, per microphone. So one of the things I like to mention to you guys, though, with the SPL meter is not just how um, to read how loud something is, but like I said, how to use this to find out how quiet something is, is as well. And what I mean by that is most of the shops that have uh, retail storefronts and do the type of work we're talking about also sell some sort of sound deadening, sound treatment, sound dampening, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the problem with sound deadening and sound dampening and all that stuff is that with a lot of guys, you know, they're bringing in their vehicle, they're dropping it off for a couple of days, and let's say you're doing a full sound deadening treatment. You're doing the roof, you're doing headliners, I should say, you're doing all the doors, the floor, the hatchback, the trunk, whatever it is. So maybe you're spending a couple of days doing it and potentially that customer is spending maybe a couple of thousand dollars with you to do that job. That's all good and fine, but the, the inherent problem with that is, um, you know, they've now dropped off their vehicle for a couple of days. They haven't heard their car in a couple of days. They haven't driven it in a couple of days. And if you did your job correctly, they can't see anything. So as far as value for money goes, you know, they just dropped off their vehicle. They've been without it for a few days. They spent all this money. Now they get their keys after paying for it and drive it home. And can they notice a difference? You know, with, with a really good sound treatment package, absolutely they should notice a difference. But is it enough of a difference for them to feel like they got their money's worth from the couple thousand dollars they just spent? 
Maybe, maybe not, right? So it depends on the car, it depends on what else is going on with the car, how loud the tires are, how loud the sound system is, how loud the exhaust, the motor, whatever else is going on, right? Um, but it's one of those things where, think of this, if you could take that car and before you do this big sound treatment package, say you take it on a uh, local road, take it up to 35, 40 miles an hour, and you bring your DMRTA, and you take a quick screenshot of the SPL meter at say 40 miles an hour. And now a lot of you guys probably follow along with where I'm headed with this. When you're all done with the sound treatment package, do the same thing. Take it up to 40 miles an hour, go to the same street, do the same loop every time you do one of these cars and take another screenshot. And then when the customer comes to pick up their vehicle, how easy would it be to just pull up your phone real quick and swipe through some photos and go, hey, look, here was your car beforehand. You know, it was whatever, 85 dB uh, in your interior at 40 miles an hour. Now it's 78 dB in your car at 40 miles an hour. Now that customer may or may not know what that difference really means, um, but you could quickly explain it to them. Or if you don't want to, or they're not understanding the explanation, that's okay. All that it matters is that the number after is lower than the number before, right? It's really, really simple. But you know, I've had that experience in, in the shop that I worked at even. You know, we'd do a sound treatment package on a car that, you know, some little Honda or something where it's never gonna be super quiet. Um, but unfortunately their expectations were so high you know, it was almost impossible to please them. And if you're in a retail situation like that, what are you going to do to fix it? It's not like you can really return sound uh, sound treatment, right? Um, what are you going to do? Add more of it for free? There's not really a whole lot of things you can do there other than setting expectations and then showing them at the end, hey, you got what you paid for. Uh, this is a, a you know a tangible thing that you can give them and, and actually kind of help with that sales process. So anyhow, let's move on to the, uh, excuse me, the polarity checker. So the polarity checker is a really cool feature um, for both before and after installs, in the middle of installs, as well as on the sales floor. And here's what I mean by that. So our polarity checker is pretty simple. Here in the middle of the screen, where this big black box is, this is what's going to show us if something is correct or incorrect, or if the speaker tone is pushing out or pulling in, is how you can think of that. It's basically going to put a big positive or a big negative symbol up here. And so what we would do with this is, let's say, we're going to use the outputs from our DMRTA. So we're going to use those RCA line outs. We're going to use uh, maybe an RCA to headphone jack style cable. And we're going to plug that into the aux in of our stereo. So if we were to do that, let's say we use that with our stereo here. Okay. And once we click start measurement, what this is going to do is it's going to start putting out these popping clicking noises. What you do is use your microphone in this case get it close to each speaker in the vehicle or in the sound system, and it's gonna put a big symbol up on the screen and show us. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So we'll click this, hit yes, probably hear that click. And if I take my microphone and get it a little bit closer to the speaker here, okay, you can see that that signal is correct. So we've got a big positive on there. So a lot of you have maybe used something like this before. Maybe you've had a small handheld one in the past. Maybe you had one with a, a little nine volt battery and this little, little box came with a CD, something like that. You know, they work very similar. The idea with this though, that's, that's really cool is A, it's all built in, which is great. Um, but B, we can use it with more than just the microphone. Now I just showed you how to use it with the microphone. And that's what a lot of guys are gonna do before an install. So maybe you pull a vehicle into your bay that you're not familiar with and you fire up the polarity checker you plug this into the factory aux input and you start doing your polarity testing. Take your microphone, take it around to each speaker in the vehicle and find out whether they are you know, in phase out of phase with each other, right? Now that seems kind of silly to some of you. You'd say, well, why would they be backwards from the factory? It's more common than you might think. A lot of manufacturers are starting to wire two of the speakers out of phase from the rest to try to create some sort of imaging or sound staging. You know, there's a lot of different reasons that they do it, um, but it's, it's, possibly more common than you might think. Uh, we run into it in a lot of um, GM vehicles with the top dash speakers, Bose vehicles with the rear speakers. A lot of you are probably nodding your heads. Maybe you've experienced that before. And that's great. But what happens when you pull in a vehicle that you've never worked on before? How are you going to know if those speakers are backwards or the two of them are out of phase, right? If you had something like this, you find out in a couple of minutes. No big deal. But here's the other cool thing with it. You can also use this with electrical input. It doesn't have to be the microphone. And that's the part where a lot of guys kind of uh, you know, shake their heads a little bit or, or look at me surprised. So what we're going to do with this, we're going to turn off the microphone and I'm going to use the speaker level input instead. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to feed that same signal through a aftermarket radio 
and we can find out on the speaker wires whether it's correct or backwards, right? So let's, uh, let's take a look. All right, so I'm just plugging this into the auxiliary input of this aftermarket radio. Bring my volume down here a little bit. And up at the top of the screen, we just need to make sure to tell it where to look, right? So we're going to tell it to look at the speaker input. We're going to start our measurement. Yes. And as I turn this up, you'll notice on the screen, I have a big positive symbol there telling me that I have it correct. Now, if I had positive to negative, and negative to positive, it would put a big minus sign up there, okay? So if you're working on a car where maybe the harnesses are cut off, maybe somebody's already removed the factory speakers, maybe you can't look up the wiring info on all data or direct text or whatever your source is for wiring info, um, this would be a great way to get in a car that you're not familiar with. Again, hook onto a couple of speaker wires in a door or maybe at a factory amplifier location or whatever it is and quickly identify which ones are positive, which ones are negative, and that way the whole car is done correctly. You know, some guys will look at just the connector itself and go, okay, well, you know, the big one's positive. Well, that may be, but is that always the case? No. So this is a great way to be able to do that test and go through the whole thing pretty easily um, and, and really in a matter of minutes. It's a pretty easy test that you can do. So let's move on to the oscilloscope. If we go down here to the oscilloscope tab, you'll see my oscilloscope pull up on the screen here. So we've got a couple of cool things going on here. Again, all of my sine wave, pink noise, and square wave info is here on the screen, so I can use that to do all of my testing. So let's take this here, and we'll uh, do some testing with this and show you guys a couple of different ways to use this. So I think the easiest thing to do with this is to just kind of show you how it works. Basically, you have your um, time base down at the bottom, which is in milliseconds, and you've got your vertical scale on the side, uh, which is in voltage, okay? So the first thing that I usually do with this, or the first thing that a lot of shops would use this for, is maybe to find out when something clicks, right? So that we can set up a system correctly, or so that we can find out when the maximum, uh, or what the maximum volume is of a factory radio, or something along those lines. So let's take our outputs from our DMRTA again, and we're gonna feed them into the aux input of our aftermarket radio, like we've been doing, okay? And we're gonna feed a sine wave into this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the uh, RCA output of this radio going back into our DMRTA. So I'm gonna have a set of RCAs, like I said, going to a headphone jack going into my aftermarket radio. So I'm feeding into the aux in of this, I'm coming out of the RCA output of this guy, and that's going into the input side of my DMRTA, okay? So once we play a sine wave, I'm playing a thousand hertz sine wave. I've got it on unbalanced line. And we can start to bring this up. i change my scale here a little bit so you guys can see it. Oh yeah, I got two different things going on. There we go. Like that. Cool, so as we bring this volume up, you can see there on the screen, Okay, let me change the vertical scale here a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. So I'm playing a thousand hertz tone right now out of the DMRTA into the aux input of the radio, out of the radio's RCA output into the DMRTA, okay, just to be clear on what we're doing during the test there. So when we see this up on the screen, we can actually see what that looks like, see what that wave looks like. And if you're not familiar with what we're looking for, we're basically looking for when that sound wave starts to either shark fin and have a slant or an angle to it, or when it goes to a flat spot, which is gonna be obviously flipping, okay? So when we see this on the screen, as I turn up the volume on this radio, we can see how far this will go and what our max volume is, okay? So um, let's have a look at this and let's also change this and say we were looking at adding a subwoofer amplifier. If we're gonna do a subwoofer amplifier, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we use a tone that's something consistent that a subwoofer would play say something like 60 hertz. I'm also gonna change my time base just so that you can see it a little bit easier on the screen there, okay? And let's have a look. So as we bring this up, you can see right about there, right there at the top, it's kind of hard to see on that TV screen maybe, but it does have a slight hitch to it, a slight uh, shark fin you might call it. And as I turn this up, it's gonna become really, really apparent, okay? So that's obviously not what we wanna see. So what we're trying to find out here, you guys, is what's max volume of this radio? What's the max undistorted 
unclipped volume coming out of the RCA outputs of this radio. Okay, well, we know that that's not it, and that's the radio at max. So let's back the volume down until we see this go to a nice, clean, round wave. So something probably right around there is going to be pretty clean, okay? Something right about there, I would say. So right around about 35 on this radio is what we're going to say is pretty clean at this point. This radio goes up to 43, okay? So 35 out of 43, remember that. 35 out of 43 was the RCA output's cleanest undistorted output, okay? But if you were setting up a system, and let's say this is an aftermarket system we're gonna put in, and we're gonna use the RCA output from this radio to run a subwoofer amp like we're talking about. So we're using a 60 hertz tone, we did our test, we know that the RCA outputs clip at, what did we say, 35, okay? So that's gonna be the cleanest output there. But what if you're not using another amplifier to run the speakers in the vehicle? Maybe the four mids and highs in the doors are just gonna run off the speaker outputs of this. Well, now we're gonna to need to do that same test and we're gonna to need to do it on the speaker outputs as well so we can find out what the max undistorted volume of that is. So now on our DMRTA, we're gonna do the same test, but instead of having uh, the RCA output from the radio, we're gonna use a speaker output from the radio. And we're gonna do that same test, but this time we're gonna play a test tone that is something a mids and highs speaker or a coax speaker would play. So let's set it to say a thousand hertz, okay? So I'll put this back to a thousand or close to it. And then we're gonna do that same test. So I'm gonna start to bring my volume up. I'm gonna change my input up here at the top to speaker. So we'll make sure we see that on the screen, okay? And let's change our time base here so that we can see that a little bit better, right? And let's bring this up and see what we've got. So. This is at volume 24. I'm gonna change my vertical scale because we're about to run out of space here, right? And you can see we start to get pretty dirty. We're at about volume 30, okay? There's 33, 32. So I'd say about volume 30, 29 is probably pretty clean on this as far as the speaker outputs. But remember, the RCA outputs will clean up to 35. So if a lot of guys were doing testing in this system, they would just test that RCA output and they would tell their customer 35 is max volume. They would set up this whole sound system, uh, setting all their gains and everything at 35 as their max volume. But look what you're doing to those four coaxes at volume 35. You bring this radio up to volume 35, look what those are playing, okay? So every time that you see that wave go flat like that, that's clipping, right? That is where, if you wanna think of it in simple terms, if you picture a speaker playing and it's, and it's moving up and down, every time that speaker plays, okay, picture a speaker playing up and down above this blue line. Every time it plays up and there's a flat spot there, that speaker is holding in that position momentarily. Every time it plays down and there's a flat spot, it's holding momentarily. Now, the wider that flat spot is on your oscilloscope, the longer it's holding in that position. And what happens with the speaker when it's holding in and out, you know, the voice coil is going in and out of the gap like that, you're gonna end up blowing that speaker, right? Or your customer's gonna end up blowing that speaker. So, and when I say it's holding in and out, we're talking milliseconds, okay? This is not something you're gonna visually see happening, um, but that's a good, you know, kind of quick explanation of what that looks like and why that happens. So remember, we're at volume 35 now. Now, what happens if you have one of those customers that says, well, the volume goes to 43, I'm gonna play it at 43. Let's look at what that speaker volume, speaker output does at 43. At 43, that is pure square wave going out of that radio right? Nothing but clipping, distortion. It is going to ruin some speakers at this point. So let's make sure that we do this testing, no matter what kind of radio our customer has, and find out, you know, what they really have going on ahead of time so that we can set them up appropriately. And like in this case, if, if you're going to not be using a four-channel amplifier, you're not using a five-channel amplifier, you're just using built-in deck power and a sub-amp, you'd have to set this system up where your, you know, your, your volume is about 30. That was about where it was clean on the speaker outputs. If you were to set up 35 as your max volume, you saw what it looked like at 35. I don't know about you, but I do not want my speakers playing that all day, okay? So that's a quick way to kind of find out what's going on with that stuff. Now, the same goes if this was a factory system. Obviously in our test bench here, I've got a quick aftermarket radio, something we can you know, move around with us and do these tests with. Um, but think about this in a factory system. So you have a factory radio, obviously there's no RCA outputs. You have no idea when that radio clips. And so what do a lot of shops do? What do a lot of technicians do? They kind of 
kind of general rule of thumb was always three quarter volume, right? So most shops say, oh, your radio goes up to 43, well, about three quarter volume is what, about 30, 35? Okay, well, if you tell them 35, you saw what it did at 35. If you told them 30, that's a pretty safe bet, but you don't know, right? We never know unless we test. So same thing in, a, in an after, or excuse me, in a factory system. If you get into that vehicle and you start doing testing on the speaker outputs, maybe those speaker outputs are clean all the way up to max volume. Maybe they start clipping back at halfway. You know, if the radio goes up to say 50 in a factory system, maybe it started clipping back at 25. Maybe it's clean all the way up to 50, but you're not going to know unless you actually do the testing. Okay. And if you have the tools to do it, it becomes a pretty quick, easy thing to do on every vehicle that you work with. And we have some other tools we're going to talk about in a second to make all of these things easier. And it'll uh, make a little bit more sense here, I think, for you as well. Okay. So one of the other things that we would use the oscilloscope for in this would be setting up an amplifier, for example. So I have a small amplifier on the desk here. I have an ACM 2.300, one of Audio Control's micro amps. And I'm gonna show you now, you know, how we would set up this amplifier if we were doing this same test. Say this was our radio in the system. You know, we found out what the max uh, undistorted volume was out of this. So we're gonna use volume 30 as our max because let's say we were using the internal amplifier in this to drive our door speakers. We are using the RCA output of this to go to our ACM amp. Let's say we're gonna use this ACM to run a subwoofer. I know it's a two channel, but just for this uh, sake, for the training sake, let's say we're using it to run a sub, we're bridging it, running a small wood. okay? So we've already found out uh, what max volume was. We're gonna set our radio at that volume. We decided that was about 30, okay? And then we're gonna take the uh, RCA from this radio into the amplifier, obviously. And then we're gonna take the speaker output from this amplifier into our DMRTA. So I've got that already set up. All I've gotta do is plug that in. Set up. And now what we could do is we can slowly roll the gain on the amplifier up until we start to see what that looks like on the screen. So I've got the gain all the way down right now. Okay. And as I bring this up, we're going to look on the screen and try to see when we start to hit some sort of clipping. Okay, so you can see there at the top and bottom of the screen, it's going to some pretty serious flat spots there. So we're going to back our gain down so we have a nice round curve at the top and bottom. I'd say that's pretty safe right about there. And now we have a properly set gain on this amplifier. We have a radio that's set up for its maximum output. And essentially, at the end of the day, you're setting the radio this way. You're telling the customer what the maximum volume is and why, possibly, if they need a little bit of explanation. And we're setting up our amplifier this way. You should have a very reliable system, and it should be something that really sounds good, never really has much distortion or anything like that. But the biggest thing is, like I said, reliability. If you're a, a retail shop and you're a guy that's doing this for a living, none of us like comebacks, right? We want to minimize how many times a car comes back for anything more than an upgrade, right? We don't want to see cars back because of blown speakers, blown woofers, that sort of thing. This will help you to minimize that. And let's try to make, you know, every time a customer comes back, let's try to make that for an upgrade, not because they blew up some speakers. So if you're setting up a system like this, and at the end of the day, the customer is not happy with the output, the answer is not to turn up the gain. Okay, the answer is going to be an amplifier with more power or more speakers are added to the system. Because if the system is set up properly the way we just showed you, and it's still not enough, this is the most they're ever going to get out of that system properly and reliably. Okay. If they need more, like I said, they're going to need an amplifier with more power or they're going to need more speakers or more woofers or whatever it is added to that system uh, to get them what they want. So that gives you a pretty good idea of, of how that can work. So I mentioned uh, earlier some of the things that we would uh, you know, help you guys with throughout this too are some tips and tricks and some things that uh, maybe aren't, aren't clear to everybody. So one of the things that I always mentioned with the DMRTA is the fact that this is not just a technician's tool. This is also a test tool, or excuse me, it's also great for um, the sales floor, okay? And here's kind of what I mean by that. So let's go. So with your DMRTA, let's say you have one of these in the shop and it's not something that's being used every single day, okay? The DMRTA is something that we could take out to the front and have just set up maybe on the um, sales floor with the RTA mic, okay? When a customer comes in, 
and you start talking about different systems and this and that, the, the big thing that we should always be bringing up in our retail stores is kind of what separates us from the rest, right? Um, maybe you charge a few dollars more at your shop than the guys do down the street. Maybe your customers ask why that is. Maybe they already know you well enough and they already know why that is. But if you have the proper tools, this being one of them, it becomes very, very evident, right? If you have a DMRTA set up on your front counter with a microphone and maybe an iPad there with the RTA bouncing around, um, inevitably customers are going to ask you, hey, what's that? And it's a quick, easy thing for you to be able to look at and say, hey, this is a tool that we use to help tune your system when it's done. Now, a lot of customers are going to, you know, th their eyes are going to practically pop out of their head at that point because they don't know, they've never had a sound system that was set up with a, a computer before or with a tool. Uh, every sound system they've ever had was tuned by some guy's ear, right? So that can be really something that separates you from the other guy. Um, also, you know, as far as the products you carry in your store, I mentioned using this as a sales tool. Take the DMRTA on a day that you're a little bit slow, take it around to all the radios that you carry and are maybe mounted in your display board and take it around to all those radios and find out maybe what their real RCA output voltage is. You know, I showed you with this radio earlier here on my test bench that it was not even one volt of output. Um, wouldn't it be nice to know all of those radios you have in your store, what they really put out? I know what the box says, but what do they really do, right? That'd be nice to know. It'd also be nice to know every time you put in a radio, maybe that you sell or maybe that your customer brings you what that maximum volume is. Maybe that, you know, uh, whatever, Kenwood, Alpine, Pioneer, Sony, whatever brand it is, name brand radio that you sell, um, you know, do we know that that volume goes all the way up and is unclipped or does it clip at three quarters or where does it? Wouldn't it be nice to know? Be something that you should really be doing on you know pretty much every install. And if you're if you're a shop that you know keeps notes and that sort of thing, um, it'd be great to keep notes on which radio clips where. And the next time you put one in, you've got it already kind of saved and, and know what's going on. So um, the other couple of things that we're going to cover today, and and something that I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, was something that we have that's really really helpful for a lot of the techs out there. So. A lot of guys, what happens with the DMRTA is they attend one of my trainings um, you know, somewhere in the country or at a trade show or whatever it is, or they watch one of these webinars and they go, oh, great, I need one of those, and they buy one, and that's awesome. But then they get it back to the shop, and unfortunately, some of them end up sitting in a corner collecting dust because they don't really know what to do with it. Hopefully, the uh, you know, use cases and things that we've gone over today and some of the tabs and software I showed you today hopefully is enough to kind of get your, your uh, gears turning and, and realize kind of what you can do with this and the potential. But the other thing we wanted to come up with was what we call the DMRTA checklist. The checklist is a free PDF file that we have available for you guys. It's on our website, the knowledge base. It's also in our Facebook groups you can download it from. Um, and basically what this is, you guys, is when you pull in a car that you're not familiar with, what you're gonna do is take this checklist, take your DMRTA, and the checklist literally walks you through step-by-step step which tab to use in the software and what you're gonna do with it. What type of sine wave do I need to use? Hey, am I supposed to use pink, pink noise for this or am I supposed to use the sine wave? The checklist tells you. And what it does is it literally walks you through going through OEM integration in a car you're not familiar with. So when you pull in a car that's something, maybe it's a new model or maybe it's just one you've never worked on before and you're not sure which speakers are full range, which speakers are crossed over, uh, does this car have an EQ already coming out of the radio? You know, is it a pre-EQ signal? Um, is it amplified? Is it not amplified? Do I need signal summing? Am I going to need Accubase? Do I need an epicenter? All of those things, that's all things that you could find out quickly with the DMRTA. But again, a lot of guys just get kind of lost and they, they check a couple of things, but maybe not everything. Or like I mentioned, unfortunately, they're not using it at all because they bought it. And they're just not sure what to do with it. So the checklist walks you through all that step by step. It's fast. It's easy. Now, I am not, you know, uh, negligent to the fact or, or um, you know, unaware of the fact that you're not going to get to do this before you uh, sell the system, right? Most of the time, you do not get to go do 20 minutes worth of testing on a car before you sell the guy all the gear, okay? I, that was great. But that's just not what's real world for most of us. What's going to happen most of the time is you get a stack of equipment, maybe some keys and a checklist or a, a work order, and away you go. Okay, fine. Um, but if that's the case, if the customer drops off the car in the morning at nine o'clock and you go back there, uh, back in the shop, you got a stack of gear to put in and a work order and some keys, first thing when you pull in that car should be to grab your DMRTA, grab a clipboard with this checklist, and really do, like I said, about 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes of testing. Now, if you can spare that 10, 15, 20 minutes to do this testing, the rest of that install, you guys, is going to go so much easier. It is so much simpler once you know how the rest of it's going to go. 
think about it. If you knew at 930 in the morning that I'm going to need something that does signal summing because this car has independently amplified crossover channels, okay? Uh, if you knew first thing in the morning that you had base roll off in this car, so you needed active base. Uh, if you knew that it had, you know, this, that, and the other uh, factory EQ that you're going to have to try to work with and compensate for, you know, whatever the challenges are in that vehicle. If you knew that stuff ahead of time, if you knew what the max volume was that was unclipped out of that factory radio, if you knew all that by say 9:30 in the morning, wouldn't the rest of your day go way, way easier? Because I remember installing in cars. I, I was an install tech for years. I managed a store for years. I can't tell you how many cars I can think of that if I would have had this and had this checklist, our lives would have been so much easier. I, I can think back on specific vehicles that were such a pain that could have gone 100 times easier had we had this stuff. So um, that's what I want to encourage guys to do is just have this stuff ready to go. And I think being prepared is a big part of it. You know, have your checklist, print out 20 of these and put them on a clipboard them with your DMRTA. If you have a tuning cart that you mounted your DMRTA to, great, hang your clipboard on there, have all your cables ready, and away you go, right? Everything's ready to roll. So that's one of the things that we have that's just going to make things a little bit easier for you. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about was some of the different microphones that we have available for the DMRTA. This is another one of those just popular questions that we get a lot. I get asked a lot at trade shows or when guys are ready to order their DMRTA, hey, which microphone should I order? So there's essentially three main microphones that um, get sold and used with the DMRTA. There's the CM10, the CM20, and then we have the C550. Uh, okay, so the three basic microphones, or excuse me, three main microphones that we use with the DMRTA. Uh, the CM10 is gonna be our everyday microphone. This is the most popular microphone. Um, it has a decently high SPL rating. Uh, CM10 will read up to 136 dB uh, max SPL. Um, Retail price on that one is not super expensive at right around 145 for the CM10. So that's map pricing on that guy. It's not a terribly expensive microphone, okay? But that's gonna be our main one that we use every day. Uh, we also offer something called the CM20. The CM20 reads a little bit lower. This one reads at 105 dB SPL max. That's what it'll be accurate up to. Uh, that one sells for 89.99 retail. Um, this is going to be a little less expensive everyday microphone, still great for doing RTA work and that sort of thing. It's physically a little bit larger, uh, but like I said, it's also a less expensive mic for the guys that want to save a few dollars on that. And then we have the uh, CM550, which is our you know, absolute uh, SQ mic. It's the most accurate, uh, it's probably one of the nicest microphones out there for this sort of thing. That one reads up to 135 SPL and sells for about $499. Uh, so, you know, uh, definitely a higher end option for the guys, uh, you know, audiophiles, that sort of thing. The other accessory I mentioned earlier was the ACVT24. I always like to remind guys that these are available. Not only do they work with the DMRTA, they also work with all of our uh, option port equipped products. So a lot of our DSP products, DSP standalones and DSP amplifiers. Um, these sell for $129.99 map and uh, invaluable tool when you're doing this sort of thing. So great piece to have. So let's also talk about the DMRTA and how it can be sold, um, you know, the different kits that are available, that sort of thing. So if you are to buy just a DMRTA, okay, you order a DMRTA, you essentially get a DMRTA. You get the DMRTA itself, you get a 110 volt AC power supply, which plugs in right back there by the uh, power switch. Not only does that power up the unit, but it'll also charge the internal battery, okay? So that's what's gonna come with it if you order just the DMRTA. But we also have something now called the DMRTA Pro Kit, which you can see behind me. Let me grab this one so I can show you guys, because this is pretty slick. The DMRTA Pro Kit, Chris held this up uh, at the beginning of the training here as well. So this is our Pro Kit. The Pro Kit's pretty slick. Comes in this really nice blue uh, protective case. Um, it's got the logo and everything on there. Really nice, heavy duty handle and everything. It's pretty slick. When we open this up, okay, inside here, this is what we're going to be looking at. So, I'm trying to hold this up so you guys can see this a little bit better. So, inside the DMRTA Pro Kit is essentially everything you're going to need. All right. Um, we have not only the DMRTA and the 110 power supply, it's also going to come with a 12 volt cigarette lighter style power supply or charging cable, I should say. We have our CM10 microphone. So, there's a little foam cutout slot at the bottom for the CM10. If you've already bought a CM20, it does have space in there for that as well. We also have our test leads in here. So our test leads, we come with two test leads in the Pro Kit. These are pretty slick. We've got a RCA style 
to spring-loaded test lead. And we have a Phoenix connector, which is the speaker level or speaker wire style to spring-loaded test lead. And these are pretty good length. I think they're about six feet or so. Um, so those both come in the kit as well. It's laser cut foam inside here, this insert. So everything has its place. Everything tucks in there nicely. Um, it's all kind of hidden away and, and you know, kept safe. Uh, we also include underneath the DMRTA here, we have our microphone extension cable. So XLR style mic extension cable and our USB cable that connects the unit to a computer for the main DMRTA software. So this is for using it like I was showing you today with the DMRTA software. But the other cable that comes in here, which is really pretty slick, I held this one up uh, earlier for a moment, is this blue USB cable. This is that USB A to A, mail to mail cable that's for putting files and playing files off of the DMRTA's internal memory. So like I said, if you're using that USB that's on here, you're gonna use this blue cable with it. Um, I'm really happy to see us include that one in there because it's a unique cable. It's not something that you'll find at every electronic store or something like that. Uh, USB A to A is kind of a, a unique cable, right? The other thing that comes in this kit is the ACBT24. So um, like we mentioned earlier, the laser cut foam is pretty slick. Everything has its place. I don't know how well it shows up in the camera, but there's a spot for the Bluetooth chip. All of the different pieces fit in there. And then we left you a couple of open spaces in here. So if you have extra test leads or extra accessories you want to store with this, there's a spot in there for it. So the other way to buy this is what's called the base kit. Now, we came out with the base kit because a lot of guys bought the MRTAs a few years, or not a few years ago, I should say a few months ago, or maybe you know six months ago, something like that. And then we came out with the pro kit and they go, oh man, I wish I would have waited. Well, you don't have to. We have something called the base kit. Now the base kit is essentially everything but the DMRTA, the AC power cable, okay, the uh, microphone, mic cable, and the Bluetooth chip. So if you've already bought a DMRTA, chances are you bought a microphone with it and you probably bought, bought the Bluetooth chip to go with it, right? So the base kit is everything else that you'd need to complete that setup. So if you really want to have the nice blue case and you want to have a spot for all that stuff, um, this would be a great way to kind of finish out that, that uh, DMRTA setup that you got. One of the cool things I've been seeing some guys do with these too, and it's a neat idea, is they're taking these cases and they're taking this upper foam area, and they're actually cutting this out for their iPad. And so that way they go out to a car, they flip this open, iPad is there, everything's here, they can be set up in a couple of minutes and do whatever testing they need to do. Or if they're a home audio guy or setting up pro audio venues, whatever it is, it's all in one case, ready to go. It's pretty slick, right? So there's a, a lot of cool ways to go about that. So with the Pro Kits, if you're somebody that's already ordered one, if you haven't gotten it yet, it's on its way. We shipped the first wave of the Pro Kits uh, a few weeks back. We just shipped another wave of the Pro Kits the other uh, day or last week or so. And then we uh, just got in more Pro Kit cases and stuff, I believe, today. So um, if you're still waiting for yours, it's on its way or you'll have it uh, really, really soon. If you've been thinking about ordering one, now's a great time. Uh, they're going to be ready to roll and, and, and on their way. So as far as pricing with the uh, RTA kits, we sell these three different ways as far as retail pricing goes. So the DMRTA itself sells for $650. And like I said, that's just the DMRTA by itself. Okay, so you're going to get the DMRTA, you're going to get the AC power cable that comes with it, and these will just come in a, a you know, white cardboard box that says DMRTA, so on and so forth. Okay, that sells for $650 math. And then we also have the DMRTA um, base kit for those that are trying to complete their DMRTA setup. That's going to sell for $299. And then we have the Pro Kit, which sells for $899. And that's what I showed you today here in the blue case. That's everything all together. So uh, these are available on our website. And we have a, a cool kind of promo thing going on for um, what's going on right now and, and uh, with online sales and all that, where we're going to offer a free t-shirt for viewers that want to buy one of these kits from our site. Uh, go to audiocontrol.com, you can purchase the pro kit or your base kit, etc. And then um, either leave us a, a little notes in the order there what your shirt size is, or uh, you can shoot us a message and let us know as well. So that pretty much wraps things up for me today on the DMRTA. If you guys have questions, like I said, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I listed my email at the beginning, but uh, I also uh, will give it to you real quick. It's my first name, Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, uh, dot P, uh, as in Palumbo, my last name, 
Uh, so matthew.p at audiocontrol.com. Shoot me an email. Let me know what you thought of the training. Let me know if you have an idea for a future training. Or like I said, get on Facebook. We're going to do a poll later today uh, for what you guys would like to see in future training. So I uh, hope everybody's uh, staying safe out there. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Bennett for a minute. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Matthew. So um, I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit real quickly. Um, there's a lot of mix of consumers as well as our dealer base uh, on these calls uh, or on Facebook. So um, one of the ways that we're trying to help the dealer base out and also encourage um, the consumers to get that five-year warranty from Audio Control is we have opened up a lot of our mobile products to be available to purchase directly from us at Audio Control. Um, the nice thing for a retailer base out there that might be forced into a closure or something like that is that we will be fulfilling those orders that come in through audio control through Quivers. And Quivers is a nice new pro program and platform where we can, based off of the zip code of where the order comes through, allow it to be sent out to you, our retailers, and you guys can fulfill it as long as you have stock. Because we need our consumers to get the product in a rapid manner, um, we will need to get set, set up with our dealer base, but this will allow you guys, the consumers out there that want to get your hands on a, a great test tool that have been into audio, that want to be focused to buy that product directly from us, and then we can get it shipped out from your local dealers. So again, all the dealers out there, please please know that this is, this is a way for us to try to help you guys during this time. Any of our products outside of the DMRTA are available to purchase directly, and as long as you're set up on the Quivers platform, an email will come to you guys out there within 100 miles of that zip code, and you guys can actually say, I wanna take that order as a retailer and be able to ship that out. So we wanna make sure the product is getting out there, that everybody has access to these great tools that help you deliver the best quality audio possible. So at Audio Control, we wanna make sure that you guys have access to, to our products so that you can make your good sound system sound great. So thanks you guys for being here. Um, let's see, questions. So the um, platform on Zoom might uh, be going out here in an hour or so. Um, if you need to stop and get out, we appreciate you being here. Um, you can come up, Matthew, now. Um, again, you guys, thank you for joining us for digging deeper with the DMRTA. Hopefully we showed you something that you didn't know the DMRTA did, or you learned a little bit more about how to use it in your stores. Again, make sure you download that PDF so that uh, as you're going through your system diagnostic and setup, you have access to this stuff. So I'll let Matthew come back up. Appreciate the time today. Uh, if you're on Facebook Live, do us a favor and just uh, put up where you guys are from. Um, and if you're going back through and watching the video, give us a thumbs up for anything that you see that you like. All right, thanks again, you guys. Now some questions. So a couple of quick questions guys had, I was uh, reading as, as Chris was talking there was, how do you do say uh, negative three dB on the pink noise or something like that? So in the software itself, I can actually show you real quick here while we're talking, let me just end this and I'll bring up the DMRTA software. There is a little slider in the software here. So where it shows output level, we can actually slide this to whatever you want to make that test tone or that sine wave or pink noise, whatever it is that you want it to be. The DMRTA itself also has a physical knob on it. So when you turn this knob, it will in real time, this one's not connected to software, but when these are connected to software, when you turn this knob, it will actually slide this slider at the same time. They're the same control. The other question I saw pop up on there that I want to address real quick before we finish up was, um, how do I use this if the factory system doesn't have an aux in? And that's where that USB on this unit is going to come into play, you guys. So um, use this USB port with that cable that comes in the Pro Kit, or if you don't have the Pro Kit or aren't going to buy it, your own USB, whatever it is, and go from the USB on this to the USB on the factory system or aftermarket system. And that's another way we can get sound from this unit into that sound system. So that was the two main questions that I saw on there. I want to thank you guys for watching today. I really appreciate it. Like Chris said earlier, we're going to be doing these every Thursday at 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Uh, that's the plan for now. So thank you guys for watching. Um, have a great day and we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks so much.